of the week. <laughs> hey, well, we're going to make it better starting with coffee morning. How are we all doing this morning? Hope you're all all right. I can't believe I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty much on time. Just four minutes late. <laughs> Hey, I'm doing really good, right? Really good. I've been up. I've been on the early shift this morning with Casper, so I've had a chance to sort myself out and that. And um, yeah, obviously, I'm doing coffee morning in the bedroom because Tim's working downstairs and Casper's got his toys out everywhere. So here we are. This is the corner today. This is what I could find. Do you know what? I cannot actually believe that it is Easter on Sunday. It didn't... Um, it really escaped my mind. How bad is that? I... I said to, my mum came round on my birthday and she went, here are your presents and here's your Easter box. And um, my Easter box is obviously not an Easter egg, it's a bottle of wine and a card. And I was like, why are you giving me my Easter gifts on my birthday? And Tim was like, because it's Easter Sunday on Sunday, next Sunday. And I was like, is it? I was like, oh my God, I, I knew that I'd got like a busy gig schedule, but I didn't really realise it was because of Easter. So it's so funny because when you're not in like, um, because well, usually I work on a holiday park, so you really know what's going on with like kids holidays and stuff like that. So working on a holiday park, you just know when it's Easter and you, you know, you follow it all, don't you? And then when you've got kids at school, you follow it because they're making little Easter cards and you know when they're going to be taking time off school and stuff like that. And at the moment, Holly's not at college or school. She's just working. And it isn't even, it is like, obviously she's in a shop. So it's not like she's on a holiday park either. Um, Casper's too young to go anywhere. So he's at home. Um, I don't work on a holiday park anymore. I do sing, but I sing in loads of different places all the time anyway and Tim is doing YouTube so um it's like in our household we don't know when the kids are breaking up and when they're not breaking up or anything we've got no clue we're literally walking through life blinded and I just didn't even realize it was Easter and the fact that I can't eat Easter eggs I might have one because I'm introducing a little bit of dairy but the fact that I can't actually pile the Easter eggs nice and high um yeah, I forgot about it because, you know, to be fair, Easter isn't all about chocolate. It's not. It's all about re being reborn and things blossoming and new things, you know, and all that. And it stems back to like, Easter stems back to the religious days of Jesus, doesn't it? And, and stuff like that with him being like rising again and stuff like that. So, um yeah we're not following it like at all in our house and I just feel so out of the loop but yeah it is Easter so yeah Easter on Sunday wow um Hayley Marie has been a channel member for eight months morning Gabby hope you're well and happy belated birthday thank you so much Hayley yes it was my birthday and there's a few other birthdays in the chat which I am going to shout out but let's do some shout outs and see who we've got with us I've got 93 people here this morning is that right no no this says 93, that says 167. I'll go with 167. That sounds so much better, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm ordering my new mug today, by the way, as well. I was gonna wait till we've moved. I'll put lipstick all around that, Tim's gonna go nuts. Um, I was gonna wait till we moved house because I just thought, because it could kind of like be any day, it was like, I might as well just wait till we've moved and, you know, order things to the house. But to be honest with you, um solicitors and easter things are moving really slow so i don't know honestly moving house it is like solicitors are like sloths aren't they do you know what i mean <laughs> in a horrible way but it is like pulling teeth isn't it it's like one email per week and that is it so it's like i don't know if it's ever gonna happen but hey ho so here we are um so i'm gonna have to order the mug to this house and otherwise i am just gonna probably be here for another year without a coffee morning mug so that's what I'm gonna have to do but yeah let's do some shout outs to see who we've got um we've got Ruth Jones with us this morning oh she's Spanish hola como estas espero que todo es buenas contigo Gabby um hola Ruth um muy bien gracias y too um welcome to the chat um, I'm fine, thank you very much. Um, we've got Penny, we've got Craig, we've got Diana Price, we've got Jules C, we've got Lee Davis, we've got Nikki Piper, Amanda Beach, Anna Tidmarch is here. Oh, Anna, 
I just want to say that I got yours and George's card. It arrived actually on the day and um, I wasn't expecting that. That was so nice. Thank you so, so much. Um, and I also got a card from Hazel Manship, um, which was lovely. Thank you so much, Hazel, and for my gift as well. And I got a card from Ben McSporran. Um, so thank you so much for that, Ben. And I also received a card from Fiona Watkins. But Fiona has been my long-term friend for many, many moons. Um, and I just want to say thank you very much for thinking of me, um, those louders. Because, like, I weren't genuinely, genuinely weren't expecting that at all. But so massive thank you. Because, um, I like, I thought that the PO box was closed. So <laughs> I weren't expecting anything. So how they got through, I don't know. Um, but they did get through. So thank you so much. Um, big, big thanks to everybody that did wish me a happy birthday. Um, I got through all your messages. I probably haven't personally responded to each and every one because there were many. and um, But I managed to like as many as I can. And I wanted to give you a personal thank you on the coffee morning. Because um, obviously, um, I'd have, it would probably have taken all of my birthday typing. And to be fair, I was vlogging on my birthday. But I have a thought I'd just do one great big wholesome thank you to you all and um, I made it from the bottom of my heart it's so lovely and I did read each and every one um it's so nice that you all took time to do that so big big thank you from the bottom of my heart um Barry Coppock is here we've got Jules C um Barry as well I just wanted to say um to you I received um your donation to the channel um I just want to say thank you because you said to me a long time ago, which I completely forgot about. I completely forgot. You said to me, if I could get Tim to drink in my vlog, drink in my vlog, not, obviously he has a drink in my vlog, but if I could get him to drink out of a china cup instead of a paper cup in my vlog when we were out in a cafe, then you would give me a tip and um, for the channel. And I forgot about that. I completely forgot about it and then in my last vlog the spend a weekend with me T Tim was actually in Costa with me and he was having a flat white or was he having a cappuccino I can't even remember now um and he was drinking it out of a china cup and I didn't think anything of it and the next thing you know Barry I received your email and you were like well done and I was like he said I did promise you way back when and I was like I remember you promising me that but I forgot about it because that was so long ago so thank you I just want to thank you for that as well yeah, Tim drunk out of a china cup, you know, um, and he, he does now and again, depending on where we are, so I think sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't, but I don't always manage to catch it on the vlog, so hopefully you've watched that vlog actually, spend a weekend with me, it's quite a nice one, it's got a little bit of everything in it, so um, it's got a little bit of my work, a little bit of my social life, and a little bit of home life, it's got a little bit of everything in it, so it's definitely worth a watch. It's funny. Um, I try and make them as humorous as I can anyway. Um, and big thanks to everybody that watched it as well. Um, carrying on, we've got Craig Cargill. I did say Amanda Beach. James Robinson. And by the way, while we're talking about the mods, thank you for giving up your time this morning. Obviously, you guys mean a lot to me and I appreciate your help. We've got Mampy Twine. Um, we've got Lee Davis. Charlene Taggart. Julie, Mag Julie Magarty. Uh, Rachel Barker, Jules C, G oh, I've already said Julie McGarty, sorry, I said that a second ago. Uh, we said Lee Davis, haven't we? I'm just catching up now because I'm going over the same ones at the beginning. Leanne we Weimer, Michael Bethwaite, Eugene McGeever is here as well. I've said Penny, Rosie Lee, Wendy Copcut is here, Christine Parsons, Bill LeCurtis. Bill, you managed to get up, no way, because it is really early in the morning where Bill is, trust me. Um, we've got Rosie Lee, Pixie Petal, um, Ryan Tune, uh, Mark Binning, Stez Trez, Stez Tez, <laughs> Lynn Davis, John Stanley, Bel Mark Belvedere, he was right here from the start, um, Helen Bosworth, Tony McCarth, Coaster Madness Luke, good morning Coaster Madness Luke, um, Am I going over everyone now? Michael John Dennis, Unboxing with Eddie, Joanne J, Margaret Hill, Luz Weirdwell, Jane Frederick, Diane Price. Um, I think we've caught up. We've caught up. Alison Smith, morning Gabby. Hope to see you at the Beach Comer on Friday. Yes, Alison, come down, come down. Um, I haven't put what I'm doing this weekend up yet on my singing page, but um 
I mean, I know that a lot of you maybe are not in, in the East Anglia area, but my gigs this weekend, just so you know, I'm at the Beach Coma, um, which is in California. That's on Friday. And on Saturday, I'm at the Globe, which is in Kings Lynn. Um, it's a conservative club. I think people can come in, but they need to be signed in. So what I mean by signed in, you don't need to be, I don't think you need to be signed in by guest. I just think that you need to report in and basically put your details down. So I'm there. And then on Sunday, I'm at the Bermuda Club, which is in Newport, um, the other side of Hemsby. So um, yeah, it's, um, it's a busy weekend. I have Easter Sunday off and uh, mum has invited us around for dinner. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'm going to go there. Um, we've got Alina Millward as well. We've got Nettles. Good morning, everybody. Eagle VP. We've got some new people. Good morning, Gabby and everyone. Chloe Brown, Lisa Johnson, Sarah Pip. Sorry, not Pips. Phipps. Sorry. <laughs> it's just because the writing's so small and I'm just glancing through. Um, Rebecca J. Teresa, did you have a nice birthday? Yeah, it was lovely. It was quite low key, though. I'll tell you about that all in a minute. Um, Alina Mill, I've said Alina Millward. God, I tell you what, this old age, do, 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 I keep repeating things. It's not good. Charlotte nineteen, um, Andrew Ward, no, not Andrew Ward, Andrew Lane, Christine Sutton. Paul says hit the like button. Yes, please do. If you haven't hit the like button, please hit the like button. Uh, Teresa has been a channel member for ten months. Oh my God, nice one. Thank you so so much. I really appreciate that. JKW one hundred five. Good morning, Gabby and everyone. Happy Monday. And David Barker is here. Says hi, Gabby. Dropping in to say hi. Thank you, David. Thanks for dropping in. Bubbly Cadbury. Good morning to you. Tour of the town. Hi, Gabby. Hope Smidge is okay. Smidge is right in front of me, so he's here. Um, he's always with me, he loves the coffee mornings, he likes the chat, he likes the company. We've got Eating Healthy, Michelle Butterworth is here, and um, Michael John Dennis. Um, I'm 53 myself. Well, happy birthday to you, Michael. Um, actually, um, just after saying Michelle's name, I might as well just uh, go over a couple of birthday messages while I'm here. Um, I don't have any troll, troll comments today, so um, I'm really sorry about that. But none of them really stuck out to me this week. <laughs> I mean, there was some, they, you always get them, don't you? Um, but they're mainly like on, on sort of like Tim's channel about um, people moaning about him going on the plane because of the environment and stuff. And it's like... That plane was going to fly anyway, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I care about the environment. The, the plane was going to go whether Tim was on it or he wasn't on it, you know. And I think there was plenty of space in, like, the class he was in. So, um, yeah. So, but so not really anything worth, like, reading out, if you know what I mean. Um, Because they get... <laughs> I just saved the vicious ones. <laughs> now. Um... Anyway, I'm trying to get onto the birthday messages because there are a few people that had some birthdays. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, because it's loading, I don't know why it's loading, but it's loading. So um, why it's loading, I'm just going to sort of give you the lowdown on my birthday. So I decided that I was going to vlog the birthday. I had the idea um, quite late at night, actually, because I was going to do a completely separate vlog. And, then, and I wasn't going to vlog my birthday at all because I thought I'm just going to have a sort of, chilled one and then I was sat there like waiting I don't know I can't remember why I was sat at the table I don't know if I was responding to comments or what I was doing and I just realized that um you can do these vlogs where you get like instagrammers to tell you what to do with your day where you put up polls um like throughout the day and you give your instagrammers options of what you should do and they basically choose your day for you. And I was sat there thinking how I how I wanted to do that. Um, that. So that was like on my mind anyway. And then I was like, I might just amalgamate it and stick it in my birthday, you know, and maybe do it as like like a birthday with a twist, um, adding the Instagram to it. So rather than just do a normal day with Instagram, do like the birthday and the Instagram. And I thought, is, is it going to be quite stressful because I'm going to have to be like filming for the day and am I going to be like enjoying my birthday at the same time and I just thought no I've got it in my head now I want to do it I'm going to do it so I was planning it in my head thinking what questions shall I ask and blah 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 blah, blah and I was going through it and it was so on my mind going round and round and round that I didn't get to sleep till three o'clock in the morning 
Um, I was responding to comments anyway till late, like I said, but then that was going round and round in my head. And once I got to bed, I was tossing and turning, thinking, oh, what questions will I ask? And I, I was trying to like come up with, I wanted to come up with questions that were really different and stuff like that. But I thought, I'm not going to do one like, oh, should I go for a swim in the sea? Like someone suggested on Instagram, because that's a bit far-fetched because nobody would do that, I don't think. So if, like, if I said, should I go for a swim in the sea or should I not? The chances are on Instagram, 100% of people would say, yeah, go for a swim in the sea. And that's just going to be the worst birthday ever because it's freezing. So I just thought I'm not going to do anything like that. But I want to do things that are going to be um, catchy at the same time. But I just kept it kind of simple. And um, anyway, three o'clock in the morning, I managed to get to sleep. So I woke up the next day feeling like death warmed up. But Tim um, gave me a cup of tea in bed and I thought, right, it's going to start now. I'm just going to get on with it. I'm going to do the announcement. I'm going to do an announcement to my super louders so they know what's going on because they get to see the behind the scenes stuff as well. And I'm going to put an announcement on Instagram. Hopefully a lot of you that are on YouTube are on following my Instagram anyway. And I said, I'm going to be putting polls up on YouTube and on Instagram. I looked like... I'd been dragged through a bush backwards. I literally had just woke up like this. I just raised out of bed, eye half open, eye half shut, and got the camera, tea in one hand that Tim gave me, and I was like, right, this is what we're gonna do today. So like, I didn't even go downstairs, wash my face, put anything on, put a comb through my hair. I just looked like, like how I was when I woke up. It just looked rough, and I thought to myself, I don't really care because we all wake up in the morning and it's real. Do you know what I mean? This is what I look like. I don't have makeup on. I look rough. How many people in the world wake up looking? Don't go for that wire smidge. How many people in the world wake up looking like rubbish? I'm just going to show you guys what it looks like. So I just got up and done it. And um, the only thing was I was starting the day putting polls up through YouTube and then I was starting it on Instagram, but I was getting more traffic through Instagram with the reactions, like they were coming through quicker. And it's probably because I only gave the message to the super louders because I wanted to give them like a behind the scenes video, but that was probably the wrong thing to do. I probably should have just put it up anyway on the general channel and I probably would have got a bit more traffic, but I felt like the super louders needed, cause they pay for the higher membership. I wanted to give them a little bit of something exclusive, if you know what I mean. Um, but I didn't get enough traffic and I thought, well, to be fair, most of you are probably on my Instagram anyway, because at the end of every vlog, I try to, um, direct people to my Instagram. So it, it worked anyway. And you know, it was fine. I got plenty of interaction and all the way through the day, I was going, Tim, what next? What next? What next? And so it's quite exciting. So it's going to be a good vlog. It's going to go up on Wednesday evening. I'm going to um, probably aim for like maybe in between five and six, um, depending on like, um, I'm going to look at the stats and see when the majority of you are actually online between those times. And then I'm going to aim for, for when the bulk of you are on and just sort of, sort of aim for then really. Um, but I want like, I, it's really, really good if you watch it because it's not just a normal vlog. It's a vlog where you guys are involved as well. So, um, everyone's a little bit, everyone's part of it of my birthday so it's really really nice Um, I can't tell you really what I got up to Um, it it wasn't like I didn't do anything extravagant you know but um, it's something for you to just sit and watch and just wait and see if you know because if I tell you then you won't watch the vlog so I just wanted to let you know that I'm getting on with that um, the traveller says, that's why we like you guys. You are not fake. Nah, uh, uh, I'm not. What you see is what you get. I wear my heart on my sleeve and um, I sometimes say the wrong things. <laughs> sometimes I open my mouth when I shouldn't. Um, but it's life. It's unedited and it is what it is at the end of the day. Um, and I don't really care because like um, through all my years of anxiety and not appreciating myself and blah, blah, blah and stuff like that, um, I am quite comfortable now and it is what it is, do you know what I mean? And uh, I don't, I'm not one of these women that is like, oh my God, I've got to make sure. I mean, don't get me wrong, when I go out to my gigs, I, I have to paint my face because I get paid to look that way when I go and do the gigs. You 
got to appear a certain way you can't go on stage in your pajamas do you know what I mean and so so yeah I do get dolled up then um but to be fair most of the time I'm sat in McDonald's stuffing my face with a burger with my hair pinned back in a ponytail and sprouting uh, coming out the sides of my head all the time and it is what it is you know I and with having a toddler I've just noticed that like when I used to go to work at the holiday park you know you'd have time in the morning and you'd be able to really tidy yourself up and really like have pristine makeup I mean I didn't wear a lot of makeup anyway but I'd have like maybe daytime makeup on and stuff like that but you don't you don't really you're all about your child in the morning making sure that they're clean and tidy they're fed and watered you know and then it's like oh me you know like this morning I haven't eaten anything because it I forgot and it's not it's not the most sensible thing to do you shouldn't you shouldn't forget because if you're not in a healthy state how can you look after a baby so it's important that you do look after yourself but it's just because I woke up this morning and I've been like um I don't really get hungry in the first thing in the mornings anyway. So that is one of the problems with me. I'm not. I don't really. I'd rather have like a brunch than a breakfast anyway. Because it's just sort of the way I am. But if like I get up. Casper's my, Casper's my priority. And then I get myself sorted. And and that's it. And then it's like two cups of teas. Do I fancy something to eat now? Yeah, I think I might. You know what I mean? And it is like that. And it's all very slow, slow paced and stuff at the moment. But anyone that's got a toddler or had a toddler or a child, um, of course, you're going to understand what that's like. Honestly, sprouty hair it is, unfortunately. Walk with me, Tim. Thank you so, so much for your super sticker, you sexy man. Tim, why don't you come up and say hi? <laughs> anyway, did anyone see Tim's uh, vlog yesterday? That was pretty insane, right? That was probably that people were saying in the chat. Oh, isn't it? I couldn't interact in the chat because I was feeding bumps like with dinner and that, and we had our hands full. And I could see the chat, and people were saying, Isn't it a shame that Gabby couldn't, um, in a nice way that people were saying it? You're like, Oh, it's a shame Gabby didn't get to experience this. When he hit them turbulence, I was so appreciative that I was not on that flight. No, no bed, shower caviar champagne could sell it to me when the weather is like that and you're an aircraft uh -uh. i like to keep my feet on the ground and sit there with my coffee and go ah oh, cheers <laughs> tim said if i had been on that flight i would have never flown again he said it was that bad um he sent me a message um because in Dubai, we can't FaceTime. So we had to do voice notes to each other the whole time. And um, we could have rang each other, but for how much it would have cost, I mean, we said to each other, we're gonna ring each other only if we really need to. You know, we might as well just do voice notes to each other and communicate that way because it's just gonna be extortionate to keep ringing. And uh, we, he was doing voice notes to me and his voice note was like, oh my God, that flight. And usually Tim's a strong one on a plane. Uh, Louise, thank you so much for your super sticker. It's much appreciated. I really appreciate that. Thank you so, so much. Um, hang on, have I missed something? John Beerworth has been a channel member for 10 months and says, hello, Gabby. Sorry, there's been a couple I've missed because I've been on a bit of a tangent. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Louise. That's much appreciated. Um, Lee Davis says, me too, Gabs. A few laughing faces. Heidi says that turbulence was pretty scary. The water was all over the place. Yeah. We were coming back um, from LA. So we'd been to, um, we're going back a long time ago. Holly must have been about, I don't know, how old was Holly? About 10, I think. She might have been about 10. Maybe a bit more. I don't know. I can't remember. No, it could have been nine years ago. It could have been. Nine years has gone quick. Um, I don't know. Um, but we basically, why isn't Facebook loading? Sorry, I'm trying to multitask and doing a really bad job. Hang on. To re enter that. Um, we went to Vegas on a holiday. And coming back, we, to get our holiday a grand cheaper, we flew to LA and then LA back to the UK. Well, of course, if we had gone coming home direct from Vegas, 
um, it would cost us an extra grand. So to save a grand, we did a little bit of like root, root searching, if you like. And um, we went to LA, saved a grand. So we went there on a very small rickety plane. Didn't like that at all. Um, but I swear to God, I could, there was a gap in the door. I'm sure there was. <laughs> <laughs> it probably wasn't, it's probably just my mind, but it felt like there was a gap in the door. Um, and the windows again, but anyway, that wasn't the worst of it. So we went, um, yeah, LA back to the UK, and it was with, was it with Virgin or was it BA? I don't even remember. I don't know if it was Virgin or BA. I can't even remember now. I think it's BA. Nah, definitely Virgin, 100% Virgin. I remember the photographs in my mind. So, we flew back and I was just terrified. And there wasn't even any turbulence. I was just absolutely terrified. I don't know why, I just was. And I, I don't know why, but I always feel like if I go and stand in the galley, you can go and get your own water anyway in the galley when you're on a long haul flight. I don't know, I feel a little bit more secure. I think it's because I can see workers, you know, like the air hostesses pottering around and stuff. And it makes me feel a little bit more natural because people are working and busy doing stuff and they're not thinking about what, you know, that. And it just makes me feel secure. So I'm standing there in the galley like that. And um, Tim's like, why are you doing this? Why are you pacing the floor again? And I'm just like, I just feel a little bit more secure. I'm not as bad as this now. This was when I had major anxiety. And I was standing there and the air hostess goes, oh, are you all right? And I went, just um, just a bit of a nervous flyer. And she went, oh, okay. And she went, do you want me to get you like a brandy or something like that? And I was like, yeah, yeah, well, that'd be great, thanks. So she went, okay, I'll just go and take this to these people and I'll come back and get you a brandy. I was like, great. And then whilst <laughs> she was coming back, she was chatting to me and the turbulence had started and the plane was like this and it was rocking. I'm thinking, hmm. Mm, here have this brandy she's going have, a, have the brandy I'm like, oh, okay so i neck this brandy she, how do you feel now still still not great and next thing you know plane's going like this <laughs> to the point where holly and that they've all got their food i've stood up because i'm not bothered about food because i just can't face any food right now because i am just absolutely terrified and holly's food is flying all over the place and i'm going oh my god i'm gonna die I'm gonna die on this plane oh my god and she's like i'm really sorry the seatbelt signs come on but don't worry i'm gonna put you in my seat she said so she sat me in her seat and the plane was going nuts and no word for lie she was holding on to the sides <laughs> while i was sat there strapped in because i had to be strapped in and she's going like this she's going do you want another brandy and she's literally shaking like that. Honestly, you ask Tim, it's crazy. And Tim's coming up going, are you all right? Because I know it's really shaky. I just want to check you're all right. And I'm going, no, I'm not all right. I think we're going to die. And he's like, I can't believe you're strapped into the air hostess's chair, Gabby. That's really bad. And I was like, it might feel bad. And then um, she's going, I was just, it's okay. This is all normal. This is all normal. Don't worry. And I'm just like, oh my God. And she's literally getting these little brandies like these miniature bottles obviously they're free on virgin so she's just I'm get it down your neck shaking like mad is another one get it down your neck holly's food is going flying i'm like we're gonna go down we're gonna go down for sure i was absolutely terrified and then eventually it did stop and it was it was all normal but it didn't feel normal it did not feel normal i hated it and that's transatlantic for it did not like it at all i was terrified um and I was scared before that happened. Well, that just, there was no turbulence when I was standing in the galley. It just happened whilst I was in the galley. But this air hostess, she'd got one leg between some metal car and one leg between the other. And she was holding on like that. And she was just shaking. She didn't seem to care one single iota and was waving around all over the place. And I'm like, oh, oh my God, oh my God. Um, so, but the turbulence did stop. It was awful. I hated it. But... I'm a lot better at flying now, um, but I don't know if if I had been on Tim's flight, that might have set me back. I might have, where I've sort of come like, I don't know, seven steps forward, I'm going to say seven, because it's not quite a ten, but it's a massive improvement from where I've been, so I'm going to say seven. So <laughs> yeah, it's a massive improvement, but I, yeah, that would have set me back, and then I might not have ever flown again. And so when people wonder why I don't go on all these trips with Tim, 
he goes away and he films, he works, and then he comes home and he's constantly looking at everything. Like he said to me yesterday, the first time he could enjoy that um, experience in first class was watching the vlog because whilst he was filming it, he was so busy filming it and trying to get the angles right and stuff, he felt like he couldn't, it was all very quick and he couldn't, he could not enjoy it properly or anything like that. So it is like consistent and I can believe it because I've been, I have been on his journeys and being that, that second person, it's really time consuming. I've said it before, I say it again, like he's a perfectionist and every angle and every bit has got to be perfection. And for the, for the good, it is, it's good that he's like that because that's why his videos are good because he is a perfectionist with his work and he deserves all the credit he gets. But as that second person, you see it and there's a lot of like waiting around, right, now we need to do this, we need to do that. And it, it is not like the fun filled, it, like it looks on camera like, oh, they're having the best time ever. It is nice, yeah, but it's not like how people perceive it because it is, it is a job, it is work, it's hard work at the end of the day. And I could imagine that like, Flying over to these places with Tim, watching him do his job whilst I've got a toddler in tow, and then coming home, um, but I've got to go through a flight like that to go and work, and then come. No, if it was a holiday, maybe it'd be worth it. But if because it's work, I don't want to go on a flight like that. No way. Not if I can't really go and enjoy like myself. If you know what I mean. So, yeah. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. Um, my DTR is cabin crew, air hostess. Oh, my daughter. I I didn't know DTR meant daughter. I'm still sort of trying to get down with the crew. I bet Jules, I bet she's like, it's all fine. I bet she's really chilled about it. Um, Sarah Phipps, go on a cruise and go through. Hang on. Go on a cruise and go through a storm wow that's crazy i've heard i have heard my auntie has been on one and she's been absolutely terrified so i i can imagine um barry have a drink on me uh for my thrombones in the big parade birthday on wednesday oh your birthday's on wednesday oh big happy birthday barry nice one and I will have a drink for you. I will definitely have a drink for you. So um, thank you so much, Barry, and um, sending you lots of love and many happy returns. I'm still trying to get onto my Facebook messages because I want to do some other birthday messages, but I don't know why, but it's just not loading. I don't get why. It's so annoying. Hang on. Mm -mm. I can remember some people off the top of my head. Hang on. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. So, um, why is it taking like one hour to click on one thing? Maybe I'm just gonna have to zoom in. Right, I'm gonna have to zoom in. Right, or just get up close. So, um, I got a message from Zoe. No, Zoe. And this was on Instagram. And she says, happy birthday. Hope you have a lovely day. It's also my birthday today as well. So someone that shared a birthday on the same day. Just wanted to also say a quick thank you. I've been watching your morning lives while being off on maternity leave. And it's really helped some weeks. Um, not It's really helped some weeks not feel so lonely. Have an amazing day. Oh, I think that's a lovely, lovely message. I'm glad that you found some comfort with these coffee mornings. And um, a big happy birthday to you too. I, I personally think it's still your birthday because I don't think you should have a birthday. I think you should have a birthday week because I just think you can't do everything in one day. Um, Connie as well sent me a message on Instagram and said, happy birthday. Hope you've had a lovely day. It's also my birthday too. I've had a fun-filled day in London. So, wow. Big happy birthday to you as well, Connie. Hope you had a lovely day. So, well, you said you had a lovely day. So, um, happy birthday to you too. Um, also, I got a message underneath my Blackpool vlog. Morning, Gabby. This is Diane Price and Tim Thumbs. Just catching up on your vlog. I hope you, I hope you all had an amazing time. It is a shame with the weather, but it will soon be warm with lots of sunshine. So, obviously, she did post this six days ago. 
Um, it was my hubby's birthday yesterday and it wasn't the best weather. Bumps looks like he had amazing time on all those rides. Thanks for sharing your trip and have a lovely day. Well, a big, big happy birthday to your husband. I'm sorry I read that late, but I did get round to like um, reading the messages and I saw that and I thought, well, I'm going to do a belated shout out to your husband, Diane. A uh, big happy birthday. Um, I also got um, one from Janine. It says, hi, Gabby, recently subscribed. So thank you for subscribing. Um, love your channel. Hoping to catch the coffee morning this time. Me and my husband, Alex, got married June last year. So this Valentine's, so obviously this message came through before Valentine's, so I'm a bit delayed, will be our first as husband and wife. So would love to shout out to Alex, please, as he has showed me a lot of love and support over the years. And I appreciate him and love him millions. So a big happy birthday to you as well. And Michelle Butterworth, another great coffee morning, she says, I hope you have a lovely birthday on Friday. So obviously she sent this after the last coffee morning. My birthday is the day before yours, so nearly birthday twins. So big happy birthday, Michelle. I appreciate all your support. And also I wanted to say, Michelle, um, Daniel sent me a message. Um, it must have been maybe a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, on my singing page. But you know, I was telling you that because my singing page is a business page, sometimes people will send me a message and I can't respond. There's no, um, it'll just say this person doesn't accept messages. So it, I'll have to take a photograph and show you what I mean, but it comes up on, I'd say 50% of people's messages. So basically it's when your Facebook is um, blocked to businesses comment into you so you have to go into your settings so some people are open to it and some people aren't because obviously my page is a business page so sometimes I get messages and I can't respond to them because the option's not there it's just there's just nowhere to write or anything because um the other person hasn't accepted it and Daniel sent me a message and it was a really nice message um that um you know he was telling me about like uh, private stuff about like um you know things he'd gone through and stuff like that and um I really wanted to respond but the option weren't there Michelle and I was like ah oh. so I thought I'm gonna have to tell you on coffee morning that I'm not being rude by not responding I can't respond and I don't know why but it's on Daniel's I, I think I can on yours Michelle but I can't on Daniel's for some reason so I just wanted to see if you could pass it on to Daniel um but like it's really nice that like he was saying about like talking about anxiety and stuff like that and i wanted to know that i really appreciated his message so um if you could let him know that would be great um so yeah that's all caught up with all the birthday messages hopefully i've got have i missed anybody else um if anyone did want a birthday shout out and i haven't got them feel free to copy and paste because um obviously i went on a tangent and i might have missed it in the chat so i do apologize bill thank you so much for gifting those memberships that's so kind of you i really really appreciate that as well it's really nice that i've got these ladders that support in the channel it's great it's really nice um connie says thanks for the shout out gabby you're welcome connie um happy birthday uh judy pringle morning gabby and everyone i'm late to coffee morning so we'll watch again from the from the beginning oh okay no problem at all michelle says thank you gabby okay no worries we'll mention that to him um yeah because obviously i'm really familiar with you michelle and dan because you gave um tim that birthday message and everything so i'm quite familiar with you all um michael says my aunt in ireland says that i'm a a man mad okay that's cool um hi <laughs> sue terry says hi gabby hope you're well love to the family we're, we're all doing good we're all doing good um pixie petal says could i have a happy birthday for yesterday 59 years young well happy birthday to you 59 years young it, I, do you know what i don't know what it is but when i became 40 i was fine i was like i just had bumps and my biggest fear was because i was going through the ivf and stuff like that sorry i just needed to drink um when i was going through the ivf i was so terrified that I was not gonna get mine and Tim's baby before I reached 40 because I was like you know like with IVF your chances of conceiving are slimmer once you reach you know that that side of things and I was like I just think if I get to 40 and I haven't had our baby then there's just going to be no hope whatsoever so I was always like I don't mind reaching 40 
as long as I've managed to achieve the things I want to achieve, because I've got like a plan in my head, you know, the things I want to do and stuff like that. And my my dream was always to um, eventually move away from the holiday park. Um, not in a bad way, because working on the holiday park was fabulous. But I just wanted some more time to myself to develop my own interests, if that makes sense. So obviously I sing, as a lot of you knew. So um, I wanted to pull away from the holiday park and I wanted to focus on my my business and do my singing so i wanted to do that i eventually wanted us to move into a three bed because at the moment we're in quite a small house um we i hold my hands up and totally admit we're in a small house um it's been an amazing house it's been a great family home and it's done us proud but we've got thumps now and we want to progress and obviously even with holly when she was getting a bit bigger we needed to progress to a three bed so that has been like a big aim we were never really bothered about um grand things i never wanted that i just wanted like the simple things in a home that would make life sort of comfortable if that makes sense so my aim was to just have that little family home where we could all fit in nicely um and that's what i wanted i just wanted to like make sure that i'd i wanted my child more than anything with tim and I wanted to have my own business succeeding. And I wanted to try and progress into the home, you know, that we wanted. And I thrived for that. And I thought, oh my God, if I get to 40 and I'm not getting the things I'm sort of putting on my list and aiming for, which are not, I didn't set my sights majorly high. I just wanted natural things, you know. But I was like, if I get to 40 and I've not accomplished it, how am I ever gonna? Do you know what I mean? Like I, I'm not gonna be able to like um probably conceive once I get to 40. And like if I don't progress with my own business, how are we gonna get to the three bed and do you know what I mean? And you you've got all these plans in your mind and stuff like that. And um I was like, if as long as I can get those things by the time 40, I'm more than happy to become 40 because I can sit back and go, yes, I'm 40, but I've got what I want if that makes sense, I've worked for it and I've got it. And once I reached 40, obviously I had bumps at 39, just. So I, I had him in the January and I turned 40 in the March and I got him by the skin of my teeth, literally, even with the last round of IVF and everything, he was just this little blessing because we were that close to giving up because it was like, we, that was it, you know, no more rounds of IVF. Um, no more, you know, I'm getting older, it's not going to work, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I got him by the skin of my teeth. So when I turned 40, I was just like, I don't care, I've got my baby. And I was like, I don't care. Well, obviously I've got Holly as well, but she's not a baby anymore, is she? Do you know what I mean? She's she's an adult, she's a woman, she's, she, you, know, I, I, you know, I can't go to Clark's and buy her shoes anymore. Well, I probably could. She'd probably be happy for me to pay, but you know what I mean? It's like that those molly coddling days for holly they're gone <laughs> do you know what i mean even now i check on her before i get to bed like just check your breathing and she's like will you just go away so you know that all that is kind of like gone so i was just like sat back when i turned 40 just like i've got my baby i am so so happy so being 40 didn't bother me at all and being on maternity allowed me to progress with my singing and put the work in that i wanted to and then i ended up making my living from singing so I could um let go of my camp job but also with YouTube working alongside it so I managed to amalgamate the two so that I can be that stay-at-home mom spend time with bumps and work on my singing career at the same time it allows me to do that so it's amazing and I sit back and I feel really happy about it and 42 I I was like yeah I'm all right about 42 to be honest with you I'm okay about it like it's scary to get older but I'm all right because I'm progressing in the direction that I need to progress. Like I say, I don't want the earth or anything like that, but you know, it's, I'm happy. Um, Tim says, I didn't have my own goals when I was 40, lol. I remember you turning 40. <laughs> Do you not have goals, Tim? You've got goals in general though, haven't you? Um, but I think that people, I think it's natural in life to have goals. I think that that's why we live isn't it like to sort of go well it would be nice to achieve this or to achieve that or to do this or to do that you know but I've never wanted the earth 
I've never been, I'm not a greedy person. I've never been, I mean, ask Tim, he's in the chat. I'm not a greedy wife. I've not, I've never wanted much. Have I ever wanted much, Tim? Have I? I'm just happy as long as everyone around me is happy, you know, and, you know, and I'm plodding along nicely. Do you know what the main thing, the main present anybody could ask for in life is? Forget all these material things. It's health. Because if you're struggling with your health, everything feels so pointless. Do you know what I mean? Because you know what it's like. You know when, say, you come down with the flu or a really, really bad cold and you're stuck in bed or you've just had an operation and you're recovering and everyone's getting on with life around you and it all feels a bit depressing because you're laid up and everybody is getting on with things. All you want is to be able to get on your feet in it. That's all you want. So you can just do simple things like go for a coffee, go put some petrol in the car. I'm mad about putting petrol in the car every time I do it. But when I'm not feeling well, I want to be able to put petrol in my car. You know, so it's things like that. So just be grateful for everything that you've got. Don't reach for the stars too high because health is everything. So that's the one present anybody could ask for. Um, Amanda said, my goal was to pass my driving test before I was 40. Did you do it, Amanda? Did you make it? It's quite interesting talking about goals, actually, to see what other people have said. All I wanted to have was children. I was blessed with two. Now I'm an adult. That was Pixie Petal. Oh, brilliant. And you've got your two children. That's so lovely. Um, Leanne says, Casper going off to nursery soon. Next little milestone. He's actually had one session in nursery. Um, he went to nursery when I had my grandma's funeral and he was so confident. I couldn't believe it. Um, Betsy says, I've never had any goals. That's probably why my life is so boring. <laughs> Not all, Betsy, because if you don't want to have any goals, then you're doing what you want to do, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, if you feel like... I, I don't want that. That that's not what that's not for me to go and have them goals. Then you're doing exactly what you want to do. So it's not boring at all. That's how you want to live it, and you're enjoying that. You know, um, Julie. I had a shock when I turned sixty. I don't feel any older in my head or attitude. That's so funny you say that because my dad says exactly the same. Um, I don't know. He doesn't. He does moan about the odd aches and pains. <laughs> to be fair. Uh, every time we go to a gig, everyone going, oh, how are you doing, Steve? Oh, just a little bit of aches and pains. And I'm just like, really? That again? <laughs> but no, I suppose it it is just like when you get old, your body does sort of change a little bit, doesn't it? But your mind doesn't. My grandma used to say to me all the time, she always said this. So obviously she died at 96. But she did really well. She did amazing. And we all know how that all went over the last few months. Um, but I used to say to my grandma, every time I saw her, how you doing, grandma? And she'd go, apart from old age and poverty, I'm fine. <laughs> or I'm doing very well, one or the other. But she always said, apart from old age and poverty. I thought poverty, you're not that bad. <laughs> poverty. But she was humorous, you know, and that was the main thing. Um, Saz Jazz says, all I dreamed of was having children. 12 years of fertility treatment and I have four gorgeous daughters. My dreams came true. Oh my God, 12 years of fertility treatment. That is insane. So when you say you're four, um, I'm just interested to know, your four gorgeous daughters, a dream come true, were they any of them twins or triplets or anything like that like because you like said you have fertility treatment and i know sometimes fertility treatment can lead to like broken embryos and stuff and then you end up like with double and stuff like that or is it just that you had like four rounds of ivf or hormone treatment i'm just so intrigued about the story 12 years oh my god that is insane and the only reason i say that is because obviously i obviously tried to get pregnant for well it was eight years by the time we had bump. So that was a long enough journey. So every time, you know, it's probably hard for a, a man to understand who's not going through that, like with the woman's body situation. But when you get your time of the month and you know that your it hasn't worked, it's the most devastating thing I can explain. 
it feels like someone has just gone boom and just booted you in the gut when you are so hopeful and you've thrived and been hopeful and prayed and done everything in your power to make it work and then all of a sudden it's like hi I'm here this time in the month and you're just like oh my god and in your mind you're thinking maybe it's implantation maybe it's not this it could be implantation and then you feel really really hopeful and oh my god all those months of that is hell honestly it's I feel feel so I feel so I can't explain it I feel so sad for people struggling like with IVF and trying to conceive and people that haven't got the funds to try IVF or can't get on the NHS for it you know but people that will make really decent parents and do you know what it really angers me when like you put on the news and you see these awful god awful news stories about how like this parent or that person is like in um court because or facing a prison sentence because they like have done something to their child oh my god like i can't bear it like i'm not being dramatic here like tim can't watch it i can't watch it and i'm so, i get so angry that they manage to conceive a child and then they treat that child so badly yet there are all these wonderful people who would make the best parents in the world that are trying so hard and so hard and so hard and just going over and over and over and they can't bring a lovely child into the world to give them this beautiful home and love more than anything and then you've got these rough people that are going around and they're you know doing things to their children and then dragging them up and hurting them and stuff like that and it's all on the news and I just think that is what's wrong with the world man that is seriously what's wrong with the world it's just so unfair you know so I'm just it's absolutely you know, are so sad for people that struggle, that can give their children lovely homes. Um, where are we at anyway? Um, my goal for one day, Max Pascal, my goal for one day is to finally feel happy about myself and feel existent to my well-being again. I've just started trauma therapy, so small steps so far. Oh, Max you'll get there you will get there it's all about just like being being tuned with, oh, I don't, i'm not a therapist do i mean i don't, I don't know but um i think a lot of us don't you know feel i think we're all too hard on ourselves some of us do you know what you mean i think that we were all like do we say the wrong things do we do the wrong things do, 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 do you know what i mean and we're always feeling a little bit like we're lacking that confidence kind of thing but you know what you've got to do though, Max? You've got to surround yourself with the most positive people because I think people can drag you down and make you feel like you're nothing. Do you know what I mean? And I think that is, that's what I learned throughout my years of like going through anxiety because like I said, I've gone through it many, many moons. <clears throat> and I, if you go back on my vlogs, like I did an anxiety vlog pretty much when I started going a bit more serious about the channel and I come out of it and I did like a full um full-on vlog about how how I went through this that and the other and all my fears and worries and blah 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 and trauma that I went through and stuff and one of the things you do learn you do learn as you get older the the, the as you go along life life is like my sister describes it well life is like a book and everything you go through is a chapter and when one door closes and another one opens it's the end of one chapter and then you're starting a new chapter so it is like a fresh and you can feel quite confident about it and that's the way to look at life it is like a book you're a story at the end of the day and you learn things in each chapter as you go along and then you start to learn your worth that's what I think because you learn and things that have been traumatized in the past they educate you and they make you strong and they make you appreciate things and then you start to appreciate yourself a little bit more you know that's the way I look at it and you you know you will get there that's the only thing I can say you just have to have like a little bit of faith in yourself um Laura Wilson says uh she's been a channel member for four months sorry gotta leave early <laughs> got my daughter's autism assessment hope everyone has a great Easter well I hope it all goes well Laura thank you so so much for tuning in anyway how long have we been live well we haven't been live for an hour yet so it's not too bad um Aussie Joanne says, how are you feeling today, Gary? I'm good, I'm positive, I'm all good. Um, hope you are too. Um, there's a lot of people um, hoping that it goes well for you. 
Max says, such a kind and loving words, Gabby. Um, thank you so much. That's what I was going to say to you, Max. I sort of went off the subject a little bit. But what I was going to say is, I found that surrounding yourself with positive people and people that you enjoy the company of, I had too many friends in the past that used to make me feel rubbish about myself so they could feel better about themselves. So many. And then you realise they're not your friends. So many work colleagues as well that would also put me down to make themselves feel better. Because anybody that is capable of putting someone down has got issues with themselves. That's why they're doing it. Because they don't feel confident in their own skin. So to feel, make themselves feel good, and this is a bully tactic, um, make themselves feel better, they put people down. And then they think, if I blow your candle out, mine's going to shine brighter. It doesn't. It just, they will, they will just need to keep doing that to people over and over and over again because you can't become a better person by putting people down. You know, that bully tactic doesn't work, not in the long run. And that, you have to realise that's what that is. So if anyone is putting you down, you have to close the door on them and say, get out. And you need to just make sure that you're with friends and family that actually care about you. Like, honest to God, I said it before and I'll say it again. I have a very, very small circle of friends and people in here. My boss used to say at work with his little work team, it was a circle of trust. <laughs> but um, obviously that wasn't an anxiety thing, that was a work thing. But that is kind of what I've got, a circle of trust. I've just got very selected close people that I let in. I've got my very close friend, Max. She's, she's my best, you know, and like I've got other friends as well. Um, but... Other, there are a lot of people out there that come out of the woodwork when they want something and things like that and you've got to make sure that you keep them at arm's length it's just sort of knowing your boundary in that but if you keep yourself with the positive people you'll find that your confidence will start to build up again i should have been a therapist i think i'd have made a good therapist you know i could jack the singing in and become a therapist what do you reckon let's listen to my words of wisdom i should be a therapist I would do so so good. Rosie says life is one long lesson. We learn from our mistakes and it helps us to hopefully guide our children to not make some of the mistakes we made. Then again, experience enriches life. Well said, Rosie. That is bang on, bang on, bang on. Couldn't put it better myself. Um, I'm still like taking learning things from my dad. Like <laughs> Oh, well, you know what my dad's like. Every single day I get the phone call and the words of wisdom and I'm not joking. The best bit is like at my gig on... I did I have my gig? Was it Saturday? Yeah, it's Saturday this week, wasn't it? And um, when we left, he went, brilliant gig, that gab, brilliant. I was like, nice one, dad, thanks. You are the best singer in East Anglia. Thanks, dad. you got to say that, you're my dad. But I'll take that one, cheers told you I surround myself with positive people, right? But, oh, here it comes. But, why are you playing that music in between? What music? That song, those songs you're singing. He said, do you know what came on? <laughs> do you know what came on? And I was like, what? He went, don't worry, be happy. You know, here's a little song I wrote. <laughs> My, he said, that's a great big no-no. Don't play that song in between. I was like, why? I think that's a great tune because it makes people feel a bit better about themselves. He went, no, no, no. It kills the mood. Get rid of it. And I'm like, well, you might have a point. And to be honest with you, I didn't really plan it. It was just, it did just happen to be in that album because I put a background album on. Um, so I am going to have to sit there at home and totally bring make a brand new album because my dad has just given me more work but he's right he is right nobody wants to sit there and listen to don't worry be happy in between my sets so he's absolutely right and then the week before a massive mistake on my part i played the wrong album in between sets and um <laughs> a christmas song come on and it was mariah carey and it went i don't want a lot for christmas and then suddenly everyone was <laughs> <laughs> like that with their drinks and I was like oh no <laughs> and I could be like for the PA system it's like da -da 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 -da. and then on the next one I played another album and I'm chatting away and I actually caught this in my vlog I'm chatting to Paul and John like two of my roadies that well 
they come with me and they follow me around on a lot of the gigs and they're really supportive, they're great blokes. And I'm sat there chatting to them, socialising, and dad went, Gabby, you're playing a backing track. And I was like, what? And I was playing, um, don't blame it on the boogie, but it was just the backing track and there was no words to it. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't even realise. I was like, how did that get in there? Because what I'd done is when I was creating that album, I meant to put the Jackson 5, the original song in there, but I put my backing track, this is on iTunes, I put my backing track into the album. I've done this the other way around as well. I've got to sing a song and it's been the actual song and I've gone, oh my God. And I've had to get out of it and skip. That's only happened once or twice in my whole career, but it has happened. And then, um, but yeah, I was like, oh my God. And then my dad's going, like that shaking his head at me and it's like oh my god he's right though he's so so right I really need to sort it out and not let that happen and prove it all and make sure but we all make mistakes don't we in our jobs and the only thing is when I do make a mistake my dad spots it and he lets me know <laughs> but he does tell me I'm the best singer in East Anglia so there you go that's something in it I'll take that, so it's not bad. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna have to go because I've been live an hour and you guys have got things to do, I'm sure. But um, we do have um, 199 people with us at the moment. If you haven't hit the thumbs up, then please hit the thumbs up. Drop a comment as well after the live on the normal uh, comment section, that'd be great. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you do subscribe and make sure that you hit that notification bell because Sometimes people forget to hit that notification bell and then when a vlog appears, people say, oh, I didn't see it because the notification didn't come up because you've got to hit that bell. So make sure that you do hit it. Um, don't forget as well, you can follow me on Instagram. So please come on over and check out what's going on. Gabby Starbuck, vocalist. Gabby spelt with one B, by the way, just so you know. So come on over and give me a follow and come over to my singing page on Facebook, which is under Gabby Starbuck Vocalist Entertainer. So basically, whichever social you go on, if you put Gabby Starbuck Vocalist, it'll come up. So basically, get involved, come and see what's going on because I do update ever so often. Make sure that you tune in on Wednesday because my vlog is going to be going up on my birthday with the Instagram bits on it as well. So that's what you guys decided that I should do with my birthday. So please come on over and check that out. Come and share the love. So anyway, everyone have an amazing day. And if you're going to do something today, make sure that it is something positive. And I'll see you for the premiere on Wednesday. Take care. Have a great day. The sun is shining.